Hello guys, and welcome to part 5 of the Mega Multiplayer Rear Game series. In the last episode, we show you how to synchronize custom data in Normcore. Specifically, we looked at how to change the color of your avatar. Now, you can change your avatar's color, but what about if you want people to give their avatars a nickname so you can keep them apart? Well, that's what we're going to show you in this video. For this, we will need an RPC-like event message and for that, as always, we're going to jump into the documentation first. Keep in mind that here we are talking about RPC-like event messages and not RPCs themselves, since Normcore has since removed the documentation for RPCs, because they discourage the use of RPCs in general. In the context of Normcore, an RPC is a way for clients to communicate with the Normcore server and invoke specific functions or methods on the server. This can be used to synchronize data or actions between different clients, or to allow the server to perform tasks that should be performed consistently across all clients. For example, you would want to send an RPC to trigger a particle effect as you can see on the Normcore documentation, or to execute a function that checks for a win condition and declares a winner. RPCs are reliable by default. This means they are guaranteed to be received and executed on the remote side. However, sometimes developers might want to opt out reliability, which is often the case for non-critical events such as for particle effects, bounce effects, etc. However, in this tutorial we will use a reliable RPC since we want to make sure that when a player changes their name everyone gets an update and is able to see the new name correctly. It's important to note that RPCs should be used with caution, as they can potentially impact performance if used excessively or incorrectly. Also, there could be problems with the order or timing of the message, which could introduce bugs that are difficult to debug or reproduce. Therefore, Normcore themselves in general discourages the use of RPCs. Now, enough talking, let's jump over to Unity and create our own RPC-like event message that can be fired by anyone in the room. So, firstly, we want to interact with a keyboard, and that's why we're going to add uh, raycasts to our hands. So on the left hand and the right hand, we will have a Ray Interactor, so we can later interact with the UI of the keyboard. And we are then ready to import our keyboard asset, you can find it in the link below. Just drag Save our script now and go back to Unity. As you know by now, we will now see here Compile Model. So let's just click on Compile Model. Then, after this is finished, we can take a look at our model. 
and we see that normal has auto-generated code for us. Next, we're going to create a namesync script that holds a reference to the TextMesh Pro component on our avatar that displays the name. Okay, let's also add this script to our new namespace and remove these two methods. We use this method we inherit from our namesync model. Model is fresh, we set the current name that we have to our TextMesh Pro component, update the name and then subscribe to the current model, so if there is any change the name will be updated for every client. In the name did change method all we do is call the update name method. In the update name method we set the TextMesh Pro text to the name of the model that we want to give to the avatar. And to do that we need a link between our avatar and the keyboard. And for this we need a method that we are going to call whenever we change the name on our keyboard. We're going to call this method private void set text and we will give it a string that we're going to pass from the keyboard to this method. Of course, this method should be public. And all we're going to do here is put the model name to the name that we pass to this method. And that's it. Alright, now that we've written all the code, let's set up our avatar for the text that we show above his head. We look for our avatar prefab, so let's go to real time plus VR player. Click here. And now we can find our VR player prefab. We open that and then somewhere on the head we want to add a 3D object which will be a TextMesh Pro text. Then we will make sure that it fits above its head. Now here all we have to do is add a real-time view component, so our name is synced. And then we want to give it a default name. This name will be shown above our head when we didn't type in our name yet. Then on our parent we can just add our name sync script, like we did for the color. And then we can reference the TextMesh Pro component that we just created. Let's name it name. It's more organized. So now, how will we get the information from the keyboard to the avatar? For that, we need one last script that connects the both. We will call it update avatar. Let's go to the scripts folder once again. Go to name. And we will name this update avatar. This is going to be the link between our avatar and the keyboard, so let's add this script to the real-time plus VR player component. 
As always, let's add this class to our namespace. And now here we need a reference to the real-time avatar manager that we basically have above this script in our Unity. And then we also need a reference to our real-time avatar. So let's add this here. This is basically our local avatar. Lastly, we need a variable for the string of the name that we pass from the keyboard. We're gonna call it local player name. So basically, we can get the real time avatar manager directly in the awake method since we know we have it right there in the hierarchy. So let's just type real time avatar manager equals get component real time avatar manager. For the real time avatar, it's not so easy because it doesn't exist in our hierarchy right from the start of the game. It exists as soon as we connect to the server and the avatar is present in our hierarchy. So we have to wait until this avatar is created. To do that, we will subscribe to the avatar created event, which comes from the real time avatar manager, which is why we need to fetch it first. We make an on enable method. And since we only have one command here, we can also write that in one line like before. We can now reference the real time avatar manager dot avatar created. And if the avatar is created, we want to call a new method, which is called avatar created. We're going to create this method. And in this method, we basically check if the avatar is the local avatar, then we want to assign this local avatar to our real-time avatar variable. Now we have a reference to our avatar and we are able to pass information to our avatar. The only thing missing is to give it the name. We're going to create one last method, which we're going to call public void save local player name and we give it a text and this method is going to be called from the enter button on our keyboard here we set the local player name to the name field text the name field text is the input of the keyboard. And lastly, we want to pass this name to the avatar. So let's reference our real time avatar that we fetched before. Then we get a component in its children, which is going to be the name sync. And then we're going to call from this name sync the set text method that we made public before. And then we're going to pass the local player name. And that's all we have to do in this class. Let's go back to Unity. Now we're almost done, guys. All we have to do now is connect this keyboard to our name. Basically, when we press this enter button, we want to send the message to our text mesh pro component on our head. So let's go to the keyboard, go down to content, keys, and we see the enter button is in the fourth row. We open that and we go to the button. We want to add a new event. For that, we're going to drag in the real time plus VR player component since we have our update avatar script on this component. We then search for update avatar and we go down to save local player name and here in the text field we can reference the input field of the keyboard and this is all we have to do let's go in and test if we can set our name like you can see here we just entered with a random color according to our last tutorial and here with our race we can just interact with our ui and type in our name 
and as soon as we are finished we can press on enter and our name is changed we can also just go back change our name press on enter again every time we change our name it will be changed accordingly for every client awesome guys and that's it for this video in this video we learned how to create rpc like events in normcore and how we can update the player's name with it in the next video we are going to show you how to mute your own audio with a similar kind of event after that you will have all the basic setup you will need for your vr social multiplayer game let us know down in the comments what other normcore features you would like to see from us if you enjoy this type of content please consider subscribing to the channel or leaving us a like you can find the source code for all the videos on our patreon and for questions, feel free to join our Discord channel and we are happy to answer you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.